to work out in my head why this painting is so moving, why it's such a good self-portrait. Um, and it's a bit of a, a big claim to make, but I think certainly it's the best self-portrait painted in the 20th century. And there will never be a self-portrait as good as this, simply because the knowledge um, behind the painting is lost. Um, Robert's technique goes right back to Rubens, Rembrandt. He was an expert at tone more than anything else and a very sensitive colourist and a brilliant draftsman. But there's something very haunting about this painting. With the connection of the two of them, it's a very moving painting. Um, lots of painters I know, they can't see this painting without being moved. And whether it's something to do with the fact that we knew Robert, whether it's to do with the fact that there's almost a, in his expression, an inevitability of death. That's what, that's what I feel from it. Um, but the paint is very poetic. There's the restraint, there's no detail. The colouring is, is very rich. It takes quite a lot of courage when one is painting a head to put such colours as blue-grey and uh, quite bright red so it's very dry, scumbly paint. She's slightly more in focus than Robert is. And of course, her arm stretching across, that's a lot thicker paint and, and brightly coloured paint. And there'd be reasons why Robert chose the complementary blue and orange to bring the painting forward. What I love as much as the painting and, and the heads, and that's just a feast for me as it is. When I, when I used to take paintings to show Robert, he used to breathe them in about six inches away from his, his nose and then look at it from a distance. But what people might not um, appreciate is the a delicious colouring in the paper hats themselves. And they're very far from white if we compare them with the white wall behind. They're delicious golds and blues and if we see this painting in black and white because it was a poster for the exhibition it just works so well tonally and this is Robert's skill really you can see Robert's paintings from about 20 30 feet away and they really work tonally and there's something about this painting also which reminds me of Rembrandt's late self-portrait from when he was 63. I moved in the same way as I'm moved by Robert's painting and it's to do with a sort of look in his expression of the inevitability of death. You know, he's resigned. I mean, it could be me being subjective, but I, I, I feel like he's not hiding anything. That's what's lovely about this self-portrait. He used to say to me when I was painting self-portraits, to imagine I've never seen that image before. That's quite difficult, but he's not pretending anything. He's resigned to his fate. And there's just such an atmosphere with this painting. It's unusual because they're both wearing crowns. Why are they wearing crowns? It connects them in a beautiful way. But certainly a painting that moves, which reminds me of a painter of Diogenes in Robert's studio at night, which is just around the corner. <laughs>